and you can start anytime. Great. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, if you're here for the Niagara Region Waste Management Strategic Plan, you're definitely in the right spot. My name is Shelley Reed, and I'm with GHD, the consultant working on the project with Niagara Region. And today, um, as Heidi mentioned, we're recording the session. The presentation is going to be about 30 minutes. You're muted now, uh, but we'll have time for Q&A at the end of the presentation where you'll be able to unmute yourself and we can have a discussion. We'll also have the Q&A function open um, throughout the duration of the presentation. So if you want to pop any questions in there, you're welcome to do that and we'll address them during the Q&A. Um, we'll also be asking some poll questions throughout, um, so stay tuned for that. And on that note, I'll hand it over to Jennifer. Thank you, Shelley. So before we get started, we would like to acknowledge that Niagara Region is situated on treaty land. This land is steeped in the rich history of the First Nations, such as the Haudenosaunee, Haudenosaunee, and Anishinaabe, including the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. There are many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit from across Turtle Island that live and work in Niagara today. The regional municipality of Niagara stands with all Indigenous peoples, past and present, in promoting the wide stewardship of the lands upon which we live. We are thankful to be able to live and work in these territories, and we thank the generations of Indigenous people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years and who continue to do so, providing leadership and inspiration for our work. So as we share information today, we do encourage you to reflect on how we can honor our collective commitment to make the promise and the challenge of truth and reconciliation real in our communities through the work we do building a more sustainable future. And so again, I'd like to welcome everyone here today. Um, we're here at Niagara Region. We're here with our project partner, GHD, to share with you um, this exciting, this is exciting for us. This is our first ever waste management strategic plan. So we've retained GHD to prepare the plan and we also have another consultant working with them. That's Municipal View. My name is Jennifer Mazurik. I am the Waste Management Program Manager in Policy and Planning, and I am the project manager for this particular plan. And presenting today, we have Shelley Reed and Brian Dermody from GHD. And so I want to clarify that for today, what we're doing is providing an introduction to the Waste Management Strategic Plan. So we're just at the beginning of this process, and I want to make sure you understand that you will have the opportunity to provide feedback that will shape this strategy. Today's presentation is higher level, but we'll be coming back to you um, multiple times throughout the year and you'll have an opportunity to provide specific or to provide feedback on specific recommendations as well. So with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Brian. Thank you and good evening everyone. Uh, happy to be here. My name is Brian Dermody with GHD. I'm an environmental engineer and I'll be leading you through the presentation tonight on the Niagara Region Waste Management Strategic Plan. So uh, a bit of an agenda for tonight uh, session. So we're going to talk about why Niagara Region is preparing a waste management strategic plan in the first place, um, provide an overview of the current waste management system, uh, give a little sneak peek on what the waste management strategic plan might look like and talk about the process and the timelines of that. Uh, and then perhaps most importantly is really to, to get feedback here, to get the audience to answer some live poll questions, uh, as well as a Q&A session uh, at the end of this presentation. We really wanna get your suggestions, comments, questions um, to ensure that the Waste Management Strategic Plan reflects your needs and vision um, for the future of waste management in the region. It really is your plan. So um, with that, I'm gonna dive right into our first poll question here. So poll question number one, uh, what best describes uh, how you interact with the Niagara Region Waste Management System? Um, so you can select as many answers uh, as they apply to you. So please go ahead and you should have an option coming up on your screen now to um, select your options. And then once you hit submit, we should start to see some results coming in. Uh, 
know, Shelly, is it you that has the results coming up or I'm not seeing anything here yet? I think Heidi might have those, right? Yep, I do have those. So I think we've had five responses. Um, and just for anyone that might not be able to uh, access the poll, you could, if you have a chat function, you could try to access it from there. So just based on the results, how do it looks like most of them are residents receiving curbside collection or other? Yep, 80% uh, is uh, the first option, resident receiving curbside collection. Okay, that's great. Thanks thanks for the responses, everyone. Really good to uh, to hear. So maybe move on, thank you. Um, so right off the bat, what is a waste management strategic plan and why does Niagara Region need one? Uh, waste Management Strategic Plan, it's a document that's going to guide the region over the next 25 years uh, and hopefully to develop innovative ways that will divert as much waste as possible away from the landfill and reduce the region's environmental footprint uh, of the uh, waste operations. So not surprisingly, as the population of the region uh, increases, uh, the Waste Management Strategic Plan becomes a, a key factor in sort of defining success uh, as we move forward. Uh, allowing the region to support um, goals for a circular economy, reduce the environmental footprint of waste management operations, and achieve net zero um, greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. So that said, we're going to jump into a few uh, little facts here on the region. So uh, as of 2022, the region's population was just under half a million, um, and it's predicted that the region's population is going to grow to about 700,000 people by 2051. Uh, and well over a quarter million jobs as well. So um, growth across the board um, well into the future. So the region has set a target that 60% of all growth is going to be accommodated through intensification uh, and higher densities of existing urban areas. So growth is going to focus on those strategic growth areas, um, which include downtown areas in St. Catharines, Niagara Falls, Welland, uh, particularly around GO stations, the future GO station in Lincoln, uh, as well as the South Niagara Falls Regional Growth Center. Um, so the intensification means more waste, more people, more waste, um, but also likely to see more multi-residential buildings, which present their own sort of unique challenges in terms of waste collection, uh, as opposed to single family residential dwellings. Next slide. Thank you. So, um, just looking at some national waste trends as well. So in addition to pure population growth, uh, we're seeing some really interesting trends across the country um, with respect to the type and volume of garbage that's being put out. So um, the average Canadian household produces about 79 kilograms of food waste per year. And what's particularly striking about that is about 60% of uh, our household food waste is currently avoidable. Um, so shouldn't be going out as food waste in the first place. Uh, E-waste or electronic waste, that's also on the rise, um, all the gadgets and things these days. So um, in 20 or sorry, in the year 2000, it was about 252,000 tons. Um, fast forward 20 years later to 2020, and that's almost quadrupled to 954,000 tons. Uh, and that number is only expected to grow as we move forward into the future, um, you know, getting well over a, a million uh, by 2030 um, as well looking at uh, used and, and sort of waste apparel, um, fast fashion, if you will, um, 1.3 million tons of that generated each year in the country, and about three quarters of that is currently being sent to the landfill. So certainly missed opportunities in a couple of categories there. Um, finally, construction demolition waste um, from the construction sec uh, sector that generates about a third of the total solid waste in the country, um, which is equal to more than 4 million tons of waste per year. Uh, and about 80% of that total is sent directly to landfill. So the final reason why uh, the region is developing a strategy is to respond to the provincial government's own targets to divert 80% of waste from all landfills by the year 2050. Um, so although the province is the one that developed that target, it's up to uh, individual uh, municipalities in terms of how they want to achieve that goal. So really that begs the question of where do we go from here? So before we start thinking about the future, uh, let's learn a little bit more about the current waste management system in the region. 
So as you can see here, really four main uh, main players, the Niagara region itself, uh, working with local area municipalities, as well as the provincial government uh, and third party contracts and partnerships. So, as I mentioned, the province is the one that sets the targets and the legislation, uh, such as the strategy for a waste free Ontario. They also run some of the diversion programs, uh, such as hazardous materials, tires, uh, as well as the residential recycling programs now. Uh, and then third party contracts, very important as well. So Walker Environmental, they provide long term waste disposal at their landfill and Thorold. Um, there's two collection contractors, Miller Waste and uh, GFL or Green for Life. And then finally, the region works with uh, many community partners on diversion programs um, and special events for recycling and organics collection, textile diversion for multi-res buildings and so on. Looking at the residential customers, so the region offers collection services to about half a million people living in low density and, and multi-residential properties uh, in about 205,000 households all across the region. Um, so they provide curbside collection in all areas, including both urban and rural areas. And then looking at some ICI, uh, next slide. So ICI, industrial, commercial, and institutional customers, um, they are also serviced. Uh, the region services about 7,400 properties um, within the ICI sector. Um, so eligible properties in ICI uh, are lower than three stories. They're all eligible for collection if they choose to do so. Otherwise, they can certainly elect to be serviced privately um what property or sorry i see my properties that are not eligible or choose not to um they they yeah sorry they have their own um, private collection contractors um so they the region collects from all types of businesses including restaurants retail medical buildings schools some manufacturing facilities uh and so on and then looking at the diversion rates. Um, so you might be asking, what is diversion or a diversion rate? So quite simply, diversion rate is the percentage of waste diverted away from landfills or disposal um, relative to the total amount of waste being generated. So obviously, the higher the number, the better, uh, as it means that more waste is being diverted away from landfills. So you know, the absolute pinnacle would be 100% diversion, which means absolutely nothing is going to landfills. So, um, the region's had great success. So over the last decade or so, I mean, from 2011 to 2022, uh, the amount of residential waste uh, has, has been on a steady increase. Um, or sorry, the amount of resident, residential waste diverted away from landfills has been on a steady increase. And you can see there just in, in the four year period between 2019 and 2022, there's an increase of 55% to 61%. So certainly progress is being made. Um, and then one of the key drivers we think for that success was um, the switch to every other week uh, garbage collection, so uh, as well as many other changes implemented throughout the region. Looking at collection services today, so the region has made some changes to those services over the last uh, few years. Um, so in today's services um, for the ICNI sector, um, they're allowed to have four bags of garbage per week uh, inside designated business areas and eight bags outside of those areas. Uh, as well as weekly recycling and organic collection. Uh, and then for residential customers, two bags of garbage per household every other week uh, and up to 24 containers for multi-residential buildings, uh, as well as weekly organics and leaf and yard waste collection. So um, as we noted earlier, there's still residential recycling collection. However, as of January 1st of this year, um, that service is no longer provided by the region. That's done through Circular Materials Ontario as we transition to the um, extended producer responsibility model for recycling. Um, so some local area municipalities also offer enhanced services to their residents. Um, those are provided by the region on their behalf. Um, so those include things like working with local municipalities for public uh, space collection, containerized garbage collection for multi-residential properties in some areas, and additional garbage container limits or collection frequency in some areas for ICNI or for multi-residential properties. Looking at waste composition, so what's what's in the pie, if you will? So the big one in the center, that's kind of overall, and then there's one on either side. On the left-hand side, you can see the residential, and on the right-hand side is the ICNI. So um, you can see sort of a few key differences there. Um, I mean, one of the things is, is that garbage makes up the lion's share uh, in, in either category. 41% um, or sorry, 43% for uh, residential uh, and then 62% on the ICNI side. So um, 
And then you can see another noticeable difference on the ICNI is that not much food waste is being diverted. Uh, that's a little orange sliver. It's only 2% on the ICNI side uh, relative to 32% on the residential side. So again, maybe another uh, area where there's certainly room for, for improvement there. So, um, and that would certainly increase the diversion rate. So where does your curbside waste go? Um, so we've got a little schematic here. So um, waste is either collected curbside or dropped off at, at one of the regions of drop-off facilities. So if it's self-followed at the top, um, you know, leaf and yard waste, organics, recyclables, garbage, or other materials, electronics, things like that we mentioned uh, at drop-off facilities, or if they're collected curbside. So those go to various facilities, either leaf and yard waste processing facility, uh, the Walker Organics facility, um, recycling processing facility, uh, or other waste processing facilities. Um, so, you know, obviously garbage goes direct into uh, landfill. There's a number either region owned or, or privately owned. There is some residue that comes out of uh, these processes, but ultimately the goal here is to increase, um, you know, the materials that are recovered, all the recyclables and that, that are then sold on to end markets and diverted away from the landfills. Okay, so other waste diversion programs. So in addition to the collection services uh, that were mentioned, the region uh, offers and promotes waste diversion programs that are not part of that service. So um, including residential programs, or sorry, rather recycling programs for batteries, tires, lighting, hazardous and special um, product, um, products um, and other programs such as textile recycling programs for multi-residential properties, a bicycle recycling program in partnership with Broken Spoke, uh, reusable good drop-off depots in partnership with local nonprofit organizations. So, uh, as we mentioned, working a lot with third-party um, players to try and increase that diversion rate for specialized materials. Uh, so, in addition to that, region staff provide ongoing outreach and communication to help the community learn about um, the programs and comply with, um, you know, the tenets of that system. Um, this includes giving presentations on waste management, um, as well as waste reduction, reuse, recycling, uh, hosting special events um, for recycling and organics collection, um, holding booths at community events, uh, initiating awareness campaigns for legal dumping and green bin participation, community waste reduction week and earth week events, and compost giveaway events. So what will be included in the waste management strategic plan? The plan is going to look at whether the region should implement new programs or provide new services, um, but also take a closer look at the existing programs in, in place today, uh, as well as services and see what's working well. Um, for example, the change to every other week um, collection uh, and, you know, learn, learn from those changes and, and understand, you know, if anything should be modified or, or maybe what should be left the same. Right. Um, also looking at alternative technologies such as energy from waste uh, for material that currently goes to the landfill. Uh, going to be looking at operational aspects of the system as well, including vehicle fleet and staffing. Um, and as a reminder, the region, again, is, is no longer responsible for the blue and gray box program. Um, so the strategy is not going to include any recommendations on the recyclable side of things because those are managed privately. Uh, so we've broken down the project into three phases. Phase one, which is where we are now, uh, we're trying to engage all stakeholders, the public um, specific sectors, including ICNI, as I mentioned, uh, environmental groups, non-government organizations, education sector, provincial ministers, council, local area municipalities, and so on, um, trying to get as much um, feedback and input as we can really. So um, what we're really trying to uncover specifically is how the community views the current waste management system in the region, uh, as well as the programs, and then to identify any issues or concerns or even opportunities, uh, and really gain that insight into the community's own vision, goals, and objectives for waste management in the region. As I said off the top, this is really your plan, so we want to understand, um, you know, what you think would, would work. Um, so, and then in phase two, which is going to begin in June, we're going to be presenting the vision, goals, and guiding principles, uh, as well as some recommendations for waste processing alternatives, um, technology options, and all that based on the feedback we receive from the community in phase one. Um, so then the final phase, uh, phase three, we're going to take everything we've learned, put it into a draft strategic plan document, uh, and then share it again with the community uh, in sort of a polished format for further feedback. 
So once that strategy is finalized, then we'll present that to council for their approval, and then staff will uh, work diligently to implement all the recommendations in that strategic plan. Um, as I said, it's a 25 year plan, so there's going to be quite a few sort of, you know, short to mid and, and longer term goals within that. So, um, and then throughout the duration of the project, um, as I said, participation is key. We really do want to get that feedback. So we encourage you to visit the uh, region website uh, and sign up to receive updates, uh, as well as get the dates for um, further community engagement events. Okay, so now that we know why uh, we need a waste management strategic plan, let's talk about the first thing we need to tackle, um, which is to produce that vision statement I mentioned, um, something we aspire to do that drives the st uh, strategic plan forward. So we're going to work together to create a list of guiding principles, uh, and then we'll refer to, to those when making decisions about the waste management system that ultimately gets implemented. Um, then we'll be setting some goals, um, specific things really that we want to achieve within the next 25 year time frame, such as increasing the diversion rate, for example, uh, and then identify uh, any new or changes to existing uh, waste management program services or initiatives that are going to help uh, the region achieve those goals and ultimately the vision. Um, so again, the feedback you provide today does help us kind of draft that vision statement, the accompanying goals and guiding principles. So. With that said, maybe we'll jump into poll question number two. So now that you know why, uh, uh, or sorry, know that we are gonna be looking uh, into the strategy, we've got another poll. Um, to see uh, what aspects of the waste management strategic plan are you most interested in? Um, so once again, looking for potentially multiple responses, no right or wrong answers here, but uh, any or all of those that uh, most interest you, we're, we're eager to, to hear about. It's a lot to think about, so maybe we need a little extra time. Shelly and Brian, we do have responses coming in. Can you see those in the chat or? There uh, we yeah, there they are. I do see it. So, uh, I mean, a few responses. Uh, I'm not going to read too much into it, but organics management currently in the lead. Um, and I think that was a fairly common one that we had heard in previous sessions. So, um, as we pointed out, certainly some some room for improvement there. So that that's good to see. What else do we have? Are we ready to go to the next one? Uh, yeah, I think maybe we have another poll question, then we'll get right into the Q&A, the real um, part of this. So. so the next poll question, um, what aspects of the waste management strategic plan are you most interested in? Um, so again, a few different options there in, in terms of some of the sort of core areas that we're going to be looking at. And once again, no right or wrong answers. You can certainly select as many uh, as you like. So uh, Brian, I just... Sorry to interrupt. I just want to clarify that you, the respondees can only select one. Oh, can they? So go with your gut. <laughs> so we've got zero waste right off the top there. Zero waste, yeah, encouraging behavioral change. Another uh, interesting one there. Definitely um, not necessarily an easy task. There we go, more votes for that one. The user friendly system as well, I'm seeing. It's good to see.
Okay, that's great feedback. I don't know that we need to dwell here too long because as I said, next up, we are going to have a bit of a, a Q&A session here. So yeah. um, this concludes the presentation uh, part of it. So um, we're gonna open it up to the audience to submit questions. Uh, you can post them in the Q&A and we'll try and answer as many as we can. So um, just to note, there's also an online survey. You can give uh, additional thoughts and input into the strategic plan. So some of those questions include, uh, would you be willing to pay more in taxes for additional or improved waste management services? Tough question, certainly. Um, what do you think the priority should be for the next um, Niagara Region Waste Management Division? Uh, how satisfied are you with the current level of waste collection service that you receive? Um, so there's two surveys. You're welcome to complete both, uh, one from a residential perspective and the other uh, is a more sector specific customer if you have a property that falls within that category. So um, like we've mentioned, your input is, is very important and it's going to help everyone kind of draft the vision goals and guiding principles for the strategy and help us support or help us identify those options that are going to um, lead to su uh, success here. So and we will certainly share the results of that before the phase two engagement begins. So. Um, yeah, I guess we can open it up to questions now. So Heidi, just based on the number of uh, people we have in the chat, I don't know if you know we have the option just to raise your hand. You can put a you know question in our chat or Q and A, or if uh, you want her to speak, you can just raise your hand and you can unmute them. I assume Heidi. Yep, that's uh, that's definitely possible and. Uh, we do have a question that just came in um, under the chat. So I can read that out to the group. Um, the question is how low of garbage going to landfills is achievable with the current technology? So I can start uh, start with that one. Yeah, definitely um, with regards to, you know, the landfill obviously we want to divert obviously as, as much as as possible but not everything uh, currently right we know right now is is divertible um or recyclable or you know organics there is material that you know falls outside of, of that scope so our, you know obviously our goal is is to divert as, as much as possible and you know it's to achieve zero you know, waste as much as possible but as they said currently you know with the products that are out there we know that uh, not everything uh is divertible and and you know, there's uh, you know having to look at the system as a whole too, right? Of you know what's uh, what's viable in order to to divert as well. And obviously, just to flag this, you know, uh, like we said previously, part of this is looking at you know alternative technologies as well to see you know what's feasible. Look at you know the cost and and obviously you know so the impacts to see uh, what is possible in Niagara region. To divert to further divert materials and residue. Thank, thanks, Sherry. Heidi, go ahead. Did you want to say something? Um, and I'm sorry. I, I just had my mic on, um, and not on mute. But um, uh, just if anyone is wanting to speak up, um, just re, uh, just put that in the chat, and then I can unmute you. Um, so we have some good commentary in the chat as well. Um, a quote from technical memo number six uh, regarding uh, landfill capacity review. The two existing landfill sites have sufficient disposal capacity for the next 25 to 40 years based on incoming tonnage. So there's no need for any immediate action to be taken to obtain additional waste disposal capacity. So um, this person is saying this is a good place to start and time to improve, focus on rethink, reduce, reuse, and looking beyond waste management to the whole chain, new age packaging, sustainable consumption, zero waste, and not increasing pollution or importing waste to feed insatiable beast of incineration by any other name, it must be taken off the table. Would you agree? Um, so maybe I'll put that out to you, Brian and maybe Sherry to, Talk a little bit about that. Sure, I mean, I can start maybe. Um, yeah, a fair, fair point, certainly in terms of the remaining lifespan of the landfills, that is a, a key aspect that many municipalities are struggling with. Um, I think on average, the province as a whole, um, remaining capacity, you know, is getting close to, to that problem hour, maybe uh, 10 to 15 years um, left on average. So. 
Um, but you know, those, uh, landfills do take a heck of a long time to, to get approved. So even though 20, 25 years sounds like a long time, it, it comes up very quickly and you can't wait until the end of that cycle to start planning, um, sort of what the next step is, um, with respect to, uh, I think incineration being taken off the table. Um, I mean, too early at this point, really the intent is to cast the net as wide as we can and, and step through an evaluation process, uh, and, you know, compare it, um, you know, evenly across the board so that we can get sort of a, a better perspective on, on which options to carry forward, so. And then our next question is, what is the cost of waste management per year? So I can just kind of speak highly in our, you know, 2024 um, budget, uh, you know, just the what would they approve. So let me just pull uh, that up quickly. So our, uh, 2024 uh, budget uh, net budget was is around 46 uh, million dollars for waste management. Thank you, Sherry. Um, we did have a question submitted in advance, um, and I thought I would read that out. How can we develop and change densities when we don't have a plan or even a map of what is happening? Um, if the person who submitted that question is here um, tonight and feels comfortable maybe expanding on that a little bit so that we can clarify exactly um, what you mean by that. If we're talking about areas of intensification, we did address that earlier in the presentation in terms of where Niagara Region aims to intensify um, in the downtown cores and around GO train um, and transit stations like that. Um, but that's sort of, I think, outside of the scope of this particular project. But certainly, um, if you're here and would like to talk about that a little bit more, we can. And Sherry and, and Brian, if you'd like to jump in and add anything, please do. No, I think just to, to add on to that, you definitely, you know, the intensi intensification and density, as you know, Brian mentioned, it's something that we'll we'll need to consider uh, while developing this plan. It's how to, you know, best service and what programs uh, to implement to best service those that sector. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Does anybody? Oh, here's one. Walker has already started the process of opening a second landfill site adjacent to current site, therefore boosting capacity going forward. I'm not sure if there's follow-up to that, um, Brian or Jennifer or Sherry. I mean, I'm sure there are a number of landfills sort of current in, in varying stages of development, you know, existing landfills being ex expanded or, or very few new landfills being established. Um, but, you know, Walker currently there is a contract, but it is also a private facility. So um, they are completely uh, able to do what they please with that capacity. So it's not necessarily earmarked for the region or any other municipality for that matter. Yeah, it's just uh, that obviously, you know, we're interested in, in what, you know, Walkers is doing and in, in planning for for long term. So uh, it's something obviously that Niagara Region is, is interested in uh, as well. Okay, we have a next, another question. The idea of incineration came up. Are there any other new projects or technologies coming online? Uh, constantly, I mean that—that's really what we're going to start getting into uh, into phase two. Is uh, as I mentioned, kind of casting that wide, looking at all of those options. So incineration being one of them. There's mixed waste processing. There, there's all sorts of different options that are, um, you know, some are, are sort of maybe more experimental. Some are are maybe um, you know happening, but in other jurisdictions. So those are other important considerations. You know, if you look at the European markets and that, for example, right. So, um, you know, what out of those technologies would would um, apply to Niagara region. So uh, yeah, definitely more to consider. Are there any other questions? These are good.
Brian mentioned earlier um, the questions that are up on the screen. These are questions that you'll find in the surveys that we have available as well. And if anyone is interested, we're happy to chat a little bit about those questions as well. Um, we do have another one in the chat in the meantime. One of the current focus goals priorities moving forward should be to review and evaluate the 2024 budget of 46 million, how and why and where money is being spent and what can be changed or improved. Uh, so uh, absolutely, that's uh, an important part of what we need to to look at, right? Um, it's, you know, it, diversion, for example, is obviously very important, but maybe not at, at any cost, right? So there's this notion of value for money. Um, looking at the current system and then the changes that would be proposed uh, in terms of whether it's technologies or, or different programs and things like that. Okay, what would the benefit of those be and then what would the cost to, to those be and, and potentially there's there's cost savings that, that we could be looking at as well. And how are the waste gases example methane from landfills going to be handled. Uh, I'm not familiar exactly with what the region does, but typically they're they're collected uh, and either flared off, or you can um, use them on site for um, energy generation, or you can clean them up and inject them into the natural gas grid. So just to, to add on to that, yeah, it's, you know, it's something that we've obviously looked into at Nigger region, but in some of those cases that you know Brian has mentioned, you need to have a certain amount. Of methane to to do certain things. So right now at our, our landfills, a lot of um, you know we don't produce enough methane for some of those solutions. Um, but we do have you know landfill gas collection systems, uh, you know currently in place at our landfills. These have been really great questions so far. Are there any others? Does anyone want to unmute themselves and have a chat or we're still comfortable mm -hmm. posting in the Q&A, which is also good? Ooh, this is a good one. Will garbage trucks become electric powered? Uh, certainly. Uh maybe tough to answer, but I, I think that's the way the industry is, is heading um, at what speed or whether that's, you know, a, a near term or a mid term goal, um, I guess, is to be seen. But um, I know the transition on the garbage side is, is generally slow. Um, typically, I mean, it's either done through your own forces or or privately collected here. So um, maybe there's there's little influence um, over those uh, private collection contractors, you know, we're talking about multiple vehicles and, and multi millions of dollars laid out in those uh, in that infrastructure. So um, those are, I think, eight to 10 year sort of cycles. So uh, depending on the age of them, they they might be looking to go all, all gas in the new fleet. Uh, and in fact, going back to the, the last question about methane from landfills, that that's another potential use for them is to um, turn into compressed natural gas to, to run a fleet. But again, I think looking at volumes from the landfills is certainly important and, and probably not something that's on the table here at the region. But um, again, we want to look at all potential options. So that's, yeah, a really great suggestion there. Have we heard? Oh, here. <laughs> Okay, so we have a concern. Same disclaimer on all technical memos. In preparing this report, Barrett and Associates has relied upon information and material provided by Niagara Region and other parties. Barrett and Associates has not audited any of the information or material um, to verify that it's accurate, reliable, complete, or current. So who did and will audit the info being used as a basis for making decisions with respect to Niagara's waste plan? Um, second question is how much info is science versus sales pitch? And third question is how slanted is incoming info towards desired outcome? These are good questions, tough questions. So maybe we'll start with the first one, who will audit the info? Who's best to take that one? 
so I can jump in. So obviously we, uh, the information that we have with regards to, you know, what's being collected and diverted uh, and, uh, and you know, managed, it does come from our, you know, um, several you know waste scale tickets and uh in, in systems uh so that information uh is you know does come from from those systems and and we do have to you know submit um so our data to various benchmarking uh surveys one of them is the mnbc um so yeah that information uh we have is is accurate based on what's coming in uh, our our systems um so uh We'll continue to to use to use those that that data source. And obviously too on our financial side as well. You know, we do get the region does get uh, audited on the financial side as well. Um, can you speak, Sherry, to the other two questions? Yeah, so I think with regards to, um, you know, what we're going to be looking at the recommendations you know, that, you know, that this waste plan as a system as a whole, we know we're going to be looking at a multiple uh, criteria to evaluate uh, any of the, the recommendations coming through, you know, your social, economic, you know, costs, you know, benefits. Um, so we'll be looking at uh, looking at th that in, in particular. Uh, I'm not sure if you're referring to it more so on the on a, the alternative technology side, but again, uh, in that piece too, we'll be looking at you know what is feasible, what are the impacts, um, uh, and and you know looking at all the different uh, ways we can evaluate that uh, to ensure you know you know our recommendations are, are fully you know vetted and and also getting feedback from the community as well. And obviously, and just we don't at this point there is no. Um, we don't have any preconceived notions, I guess, and we you know what this plan looks like. We're just still fairly early on in the, in the stages uh, of developing this plan. And uh, so at this point, um, you know, there's no, uh, no, yeah, perceived, you know, recommendations at this point. Obviously, you know, there's people have some, some ideas of what they would like to see or what would they like to see be evaluated. And that's what we're, we're looking for feedback as well on this. Um, and the next uh, comment question is, I mentioned this in the completion of my survey, there is a place called the drop and shop thrift store that was say that five times fast on uh, 37 Kilbride Road in Hamilton as a last resort place to donate or divert items from the landfill. Is that a potential to create a store at our current dump location so items can be diverted and reused? Can we create a financial or other bonus incentive for ICNI locations and also for residents for successful diversion? So we do, uh, Niagara Region does have uh, at our current drop off locations, we do have partnerships with um, with reuse organizations um, so that residents can uh, divert and, and, and drop off reusable goods uh, at uh, our at our drop off uh, depots. Um, so again, you know, that's something important. Also, you know, we do uh, on our website, if you're looking at, you know, how to divert um, certain materials, we do obviously promote, uh, you know, the reuse and some of those uh, reuse organizations as well. Uh, with regards to creating a financial or other bonus incentive for ICNI locations and others, yeah, something that definitely, um, you know, can be looked at as, as part of this. Um, we do have, you know, some programs currently in place, you know, uh, rethink your waste in the workplace that uh, we do we have and, and can look at strengthening that program as well. Some great feedback. Appreciate it. <laughs> That's great feedback. Have we heard from everybody? Has everyone had a chance to ask a question? Um, we still have lots of time as well. Just want to make sure everyone has an opportunity. I think Shelley, I don't know if you maybe want to mention that you know so that things that come out after the fact. You know that you think, oh, I should have mentioned this. Mm -hmm. We do have that email address. Uh, if you know you think of things after the fact, you can definitely email. Uh, as 
Yeah, for sure. Um, so um, on the slide, we you know we have um, QR codes that take you to each of the surveys. So that's a great way to provide feedback um, as a resident or as a I see an I um, sector property owner, perhaps. Um, those surveys close on May 31st, so you have some time to fill those out. You can also go to um, niagararegionca slash future dash of dash waste. That's on the website, on the slide there as well. Um, and there's an email button there where you can email um, the strategic plan team and ask any questions or leave any comments that way as well. Are there any other questions or? Oh, here's a good one. Interested in the backgrounds of those involved with respect to what the city, the region waste management projects in portfolio. Um, not quite sure I understand that question. And are you are you referring to what the team members background is or I just want to confirm what that question is. Oh, the, the backgrounds of the companies that oh. that Niagara region is working with on waste management projects. So I guess, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say that obviously there's companies that we work with with regards to our third party contracts. We have third party contracts, obviously, with walkers for landfill disposal mm -hmm. capacity and in, in the organics um, program. And then obviously on the collection side, we have uh, third party contracts with the Miller Waste and GFL for the collection. Uh, we also have uh, third party contracts, again, with, you know, operating our, our landfill and, and residential uh, depot. So, uh, you know, obviously you know, have a significant history with regards to, to waste management with th those companies, um, if that's what you're referring to with regards to the companies that we have, you know, third party contracts with. And also, you know, we do have, you know, like you said, diversion uh, people. Oh, okay. So the, I think she's referring more to GHD, uh, <laughs> your background. Okay. So, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> do uh, so maybe I can tackle that then. So GHD is a global environmental consulting firm. Uh, myself specifically, I'm an environmental engineer uh, specializing in solid waste management. So I've worked with many, um, you know, uh, municipal and, and private clients uh, across Canada um, and anything from, you know, waste plans to collection to processing to disposal. So really the, the full gamut. I don't know if you want to hear my background because um, I'm not the subject matter expert, but I am a communications and community engagement specialist. Um, and I have about 12 years experience in that field. And prior to GHD, I worked for the city of Waterloo and the city of Guelph um, in their corporate communications um, departments. Any other questions? Shelly, it looks like someone, yeah, someone's <laughs> typing. Oh, I can't see that, sorry. <clears throat> Usually you see the three little bubbles, but I don't see that. We can see there's some, still some typing. <laughs> Oh, great. 
Um, I feel more advertising needs to be done in the area of partnerships that are available to divert waste. For example, the broken spoke. I only heard about this while looking for places to donate wheels for students and schools to be used and ended up bringing four vehicle loads to a school from this gentleman who fixes them and gives them back to the community who is located in Smithville. At the end of the year, they were given away to families to keep and also schools are linked with eco schools and can register to be an eco school. This would be a good area for the region to link with the eco schools initiative. Yeah, that's great. Exactly the feedback that we want to hear, you know, what things we can do and, and improve and, 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 and look at as part of this plan for sure. That's interesting about the eco schools um, idea, because certainly when my kids were in elementary school, they were an eco school, but not to that extent. So it's nice to see that they're broadening their scope, I guess, in terms of what an eco school can be and how they can support communities and partner with their local municipalities. That's great. And we definitely do, uh, you know, presentations to to schools on 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 waste management programs. So, uh, you know, would obviously we continue to do that and and uh, and provide that that information to those schools. The bike program was separate to the eco school and the content to submit for a school to be deemed an eco school is hefty, but well worth it. Yes, I, I can imagine. <laughs> I always think too, it's nice to get students involved um, because then they bring the information home to their parents and help their parents understand the importance of it. So it's nice to see that that's happening in schools. Oh, and the region came to your school to do a presentation. So that's great. Yeah, changing behavior sometimes um, is difficult and we need our the next generation sometimes to step up and help us out. Um, my grandmother used to use her blue box to collect her shoes. And so <laughs> I had to change her behavior. Um, so yeah, it's, it's nice to get them involved young and develop those habits early for sure. And work together to do that, absolutely. Thank you for your input, Tiffany. Appreciate it. This has been really good, good conversation. Some great questions, some really good thought provoking questions. Ah, go to clear garbage bags. People get better at sorting their waste appropriately when the bags are clear. When Markham went to clear bags, waste aversion increased by 20%. Uh, Niagara's move to garbage every other week was great for recycling. Are there very many municipalities that use clear bags? I live in Waterloo Region and um, they don't have clear bags here. Is that something new? No, some some municipalities use different colored bags for different materials. Clear bags um, can be a challenging one just due to the issue of privacy for some folks, right? Uh -huh. People knowing what gets put out. Um, the other aspect of that is often that, you know, the collection contractors aren't responsible for um, sorting necessarily, right? So um, they trust that what goes in there. I mean, obviously, if it's wrong, they, they won't pick it up in the first place, right? But um, they're not going to stand outside the end of your driveway and start sorting through recyclables for good things or bad things or garbage or anything else for that matter. So 
Um, yeah, I, I think there there have been some some studies done on on clear bags with mixed results. Yeah, and I think you know just as for some history, Niagara Region did look at it the clear bags for the you know the current collection contract, and we got some feedback and from the public, and it wasn't as you know favorable uh, as a solution, so we didn't move ahead with it. But again, you know as part of the strat plan uh, that we're looking at, you know the option would be on the table again to to look at that again for sure. Preference for the hard bins as the clear bags add up and I feel we're focused on trying to be more environmentally friendly. So I like that I can reuse the same bin and do not need to go and continuously buy bags. Yeah, that's a big one. So we have a few more minutes. Um, we have one final poll before we go, but we still have time for more questions if anybody has any. Mm -hmm. hmm. We do actually, I want to chime in in response to the low attendance. We do, um, we know it can be hard to get um, people's attention, especially as the, the evenings are nicer. And we are recording the open houses and they will be available and uh, on the project page. So we encourage you to share um, those that with your, uh, with people. Thank you. Oh, and let them know about the survey too. There's lots of opportunity to provide that feedback. Thank you all for coming and for asking your questions. We really appreciate it. We appreciate you taking your time uh, to come out and listen and learn about what we're trying to accomplish. And uh, we really value your time. So this is excellent feedback that's going to help us as we develop the plan. Before we go, did we? Oh, sure, sorry, Sherry, did you want to? No, I'm good. Pop it? OK. Um, did we want to ask that last poll question and then? Sounds good. So we are just hoping that you can share a little bit of feedback about tonight's open house. How would you rate it? One out of five. And it just helps us um, plan future open houses. So we appreciate the feedback if you'd like to share it. I think that's kind of at the end of our time. Thank you so much for coming. Brian, did you want to close this out? Sherry and Jennifer, did you want to add anything? Just to reiterate, uh, all, all input is good input, you know, regardless of how many people or how few people. Uh, mm -hmm. I think especially, you know, the discussion has been been really helpful. So much appreciated, everyone, for, for taking some time and, and providing your insights. Yep, I'll echo Brian's words on behalf of Niagara Region. Again, we do appreciate taking the time and your feedback. And don't forget to share 
the survey and the web, the, the project page. And um, we look forward to hearing from you again in future. Thank you.